Good morning. I oh, I think there's Mike Runda on the phone. I am. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. This is Kelly Murray with the Consortium for Service Innovation. Very pleased to be having this member update call this morning with you. I am on the phone with Greg Oxton, who is currently in Vienna, Austria, and Melissa George, who is currently in Boston, Massachusetts, and I am currently in Seattle, where the sun is shining. And um, we have about 90 minutes worth of content to smash into 60 minutes, so we're going to go pretty quickly. And all three of us um, have been in this deck uh, all morning making changes, so it's also going to be kind of PowerPoint karaoke. It's going to be very exciting. So, Melissa, are you there? Can we hear you? I am here now. Yeah. <laughs> I had to dial back in. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm also recording this call, so we can share it later. What were you going to say, Melissa? No, I'm just saying anything you said about me prior to me being on the call, I did not hear. Only that so you were in Boston. a good thing. Yeah, only that you were in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to click forward, we will get started. So we want to spend a little bit of time this morning talking about what we have done this year, um, both in the consortium and the academy, and then we'll spend a little bit of time talking about plans for 2018, um, topics and events, and with any hope, we'll have some time for questions at the end. Um, but feel free to put questions in the chat uh, as well, and we will monitor the chat window. So, current Consortium Board of Directors is here. We um, were very pleased to welcome AARP as a new member this year, and Jim Pendergast joined the board. Um, they joined as a benefactor member, so we have some great um, perspective um, on the board these days. We're up to 54 member companies, um, which I think is getting close to the largest the consortium has ever been. Um, as I mentioned, um, new members, AARP, uh, Athena Health, Blizzard Entertainment, uh, Easy Vista, McKesson, Smarsh, Top Desk, Zendesk. Um, we had eight team in-person team meetings with dial-in opportunities, seven web sessions, um, then our member summit and executive summit, we also had a strategy session and hosted a town meeting, um, and then our, our uh, leadership committee meeting just happened last week as well. So I'm going to talk, this is Melissa, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the five initiatives. So the way the consortium organizes the work is into these five buckets, and as you see is this circle in the middle, all of them somewhat overlap, but it's helpful for us to kind of put things um, in buckets and we tend to have the um, team meetings, the face-to-face -face team mm -hmm. meetings focused around one of the five initiatives. So KCS being um, the, the longest around more than 20 years now, um, we um, continue to work on that and I'm going to go into details on each initiative um, after this. And then intelligence swarming, which is the piece of connecting people to people where KCS is the piece of connecting um, content, people to content. The predictive customer engagement initiative is about um, predicting um, what's going to what, what knowing what the customers need to know before they need they know they need to know it. So being predictive, proactive, um, we've made a lot of um, strides in that particular initiative um, over the past year. The customer success initiative, so the overarching um, CX experience. Um, how do you look at the whole customer life cycle and make sure that you, your organization is organized to support the entire customer experience and be, um, make your customers successful. So really get kind of getting rid of the silos within organizations um, and recognize that customers don't need to operate within your silos, that they have a, a, a full experience across the entire life cycle. And then the leadership framework is what um, is needed to support um, an, an organization that's working as a more networked organization and where people are really given um, given 
the ability to interact with your customers in a, a more networked um, type, type way. So I'm going to go into each one of these. So around KCS, um, the activities that have happened across the year is we've had the in-person um, team meetings, and um, you see we've had um, three different ones, one being um, in Europe and the other two being in the US. And we've also had um, several web sessions, one on measuring, and um, that's always a hot topic with measuring with KCS because it's always been a challenge and a different way of thinking about things. And the other web session is really about how to um, help support managers deal with this change um, from going from a very um, hierarchical type um, cost center within a support center to becoming a more KCS focused knowledge driven um, support center. Um, some of the accomplishments around KCS are changes that we've made um, or kind of milestones throughout the year. One is a um, case study from Quest software that was published and you can find the case studies on the website around how um, Quest is able to publish 90% of what they know internally as soon as or before the incident is closed. So um, the practices guides recommends 90% um, of what you should know should be published within 90 minutes of closing an incident. And Quest has done it with before they close an incident. 90% um, of what they know is available out on their um, self-service website. So huge accomplishment. We've been talking about this for a long time and that should be um, what organizations look to achieve. And um, Quest and um, other organizations this year are finally proving that that is doable by having um, licensed KCS publishers um, being able to put things out there as soon as they know um, close the, why they close the incident. The other um, thing we've made a lot of progress on is um, measuring um, the, su the success of self-service. Our infant from Oracle has given um, several examples how they're doing it. Other organizations are um, now putting kind of a stake in the ground and um, sticking with how they're going to measure self-service success. And um, other things we've talked about, hot topic was AI or artificial intelligence, deep thinking, um, machine learning, all of that, um, which is becoming, moving very quickly in the industry. And how can we use those um, technology capabilities to be successful with um, KCS? So we've seen um, examples of actually automating the, art, the article quality index or AQI using AI to make sure that looking um, at word patterns to see if the KCS articles actually reflect the same type of word patterns that are in the incident. So using that to automate the um, AQI. Um, we've also put together a new um, matrix for, for measurements that um, shows how your metrics evolve over the lifetime of your KCS adoption. At one team meeting, we talked about how um, all the benefits of KCS and how it enables so many other things in the organization, and there's a metrics, a matrix available for that. Um, we're putting together what we are calling a KCS accelerator program. So lots of um, people have great success within the first six to nine months of a KCS adoption, but we've been seeing a pattern that things start to kind of tail off when you get like hit the two year mark. So how do you know um, that you're kind of tailing off and not um, continuing to get the benefits of KCS? So by doing some assessments some interviews and um, relaunching, maybe looking at new metrics, we can um, kind of reaccelerate the KCS program. Also, um, a big accomplishment of this year was introducing KCS V6, which was KCS across the organization. And we're working on getting more and more case studies of um, KCS happening in professional services. We see it in legal, marketing, and human resources as well. And then um, the KCS adoption guide also is being updated for KCS V6. So there's a call scheduled um, in a few weeks around um, presenting what the new features of the KCS adoption would be for V6 or KCS across the organization. 
Intelligent Swarming, the second initiative, um, we're continuing to work with organizations that um, are implementing intelligent swarming, um, dealing with um, trying to figure out things like um, how to classify across your um, classify incidents, also with knowledge articles, also with um, people profiles. So looking at um, how do you how do you classify all that so you can match incidents with the right people, and then also um, continuing to track the reputation model. So how do we know all of the people that interacted with a collaboration session? How do we know that they're adding value? How do we measure that? Uh, we're starting to see examples of how AI can really help to facilitate both the classification and um, the reputation model. Um, so we can see from AI what um, people are actually um, engaging in. So I think there's great hope there for the things we've talked about around intelligent swarming, um, using AI to help build um, some of that feedback in reputation. And we'll continue to work on that throughout um, 2018. I, I'm just going to- predictive customer and, okay. Sorry, I just want to say I'm putting links um, in the chat. Uh, so um, to various things that you are mentioning um, and, th and that also the photo on the slide previous was our first um, experience in a giant snowstorm this year. That was January in Jersey City, or I think, or February. And then we had another giant snowstorm when we were in Broomfield in Colorado in May. So it was kind of the year of the snowstorm. <laughs> I forgot about that because you know I'm from Boston so it's they weren't you know they they were snowstorms you know we have them all the time so no it was it high drama for me <laughs> high drama that Kelly and Greg showed up like in their loafers at the snowstorm in New Jersey instead <laughs> of boots like, they didn't think to bring boots <laughs> um so predictive customer engagement um this one this initiative I think felt like it got the most um, traction this year and will be our one of our um, priorities for focus of um, 2018. We saw great examples from um, PTC on how they're using um, they're doing predictive customer engagement to um, reach their goal of by 2020 to have only 80 so have 80 percent of their interactions with customers being outbound so meaning that they'll initiate the interactions with their customers so they'll know that their customers are going to have a um, exception and they're going to be reaching out to their customers 80 percent of the time so hoping that only 20 percent of the interactions will come in um, to the assisted or self-service model so um, they've been making great strides around that and we're looking forward to continuing to talk about um, that as well as using um, AI and bots to um, make sure that we can be um, more predictive about um, customers coming to the web, the self-service site and offering them the right information um, by knowing more about them when they come to visit there. Also around AI in this space, um, looking at the role of data scientists. So there's been um, two web sessions in a series of talking about um, who has data scientists in their organization, what is their role, what is the what should the profile of the data scientists be? Um, are there existing people that are in your organization that can act as data scientists, or do you need to um, go off and hire new people to be data scientists? So um, you know, we're finding that there's um, kind of three primary skills that they need. They need to understand the engineering side of it. Um, they need to understand the business process side of what of the job they're doing. So if they're doing it within KCS, they need to understand KCS. They need to understand the domain of knowledge that they're looking at. And then thirdly, they need to have the technical skills with the tools that data scientists use. So three kind of skill sets that we're finding a data this role of the data scientist plays in um, doing predictive customer engagement. Sorry, can't find the clicker. Um, this is a, a screenshot or a picture of our meeting that was held in um, Belfast, Maine, um, hosted by Athena Health. 
um, and we, you know, did a lot of work on um, not only predictive, but how could the use of AI and also the use of AI for also aligning to brand promise. And one of the new topics um, that have, has come up is um, what happens when we have machines talking to machines and the agents out of the picture altogether. Uh, and what does the new role of um, a support agent look like in this world of automation and machine learning? The customer success initiative um, um, continues to be um, important, and this is the overarching um, looking at the customer life cycle in the touch point model and how do we um, impact through support impact the overall customer experience. This is a, a great picture of this dynamic energetic team that was in Elisa Viejo who created a customer journey map that you see in the background on the, um, the overall um, customer experience. So the last initiative is the leadership um, framework. So this is the overarching um, how you become a leader or manage all of these different components that we're talking about. And Greg's going to talk more about the work we've done around that as part of the executive summit. So we sent out a survey um, asking about um, the initiatives and priorities for 2018. So we sent this to the prime, who we have as the primary contact for the member organizations. And we re I think we sent out maybe 60 and we received um, 40 responses. So great response rate from everyone. So thank you for completing those surveys. And then as part of our um, leadership committee, which is our benefactor and sponsor level members coming together at our leadership committee meeting last week, we went through the survey results and put them into high level categories and then prioritized those based on um, who the people in the leadership, who they felt they would send people from their organizations to, so team meetings, which topics would be the most important um, and would they be willing to send people to on these initiatives. So we then, um, so we ranked them and to, so took all your feedback and ranked them. And this was kind of the high level resorts, results for our priorities for 2018. So number one was leveraging AI in, in support. And that shouldn't say in support, in support. Um, second was predictive customer engagement. Three is this, the customer experience ecosystem. So this is the one that kind of falls over the customer success initiative and how do we bring all of the components, all of the channels in which we interact with customers together as one, um, as one system. The fourth was intelligent swarming. The fifth was um, agile in KCS. Um, six was case, doing some case studies of, um, of um, case studies of KCS outside of the support organization. Seven was um, talking about KCS translation and localization. And then the, the last one was doing um, some type of verified project on um, yeah, auto bots for chat. So making sure that the technology set the requirement, fit, re putting together requirements for the auto bot technology for KCS verified. So those were kind of from highest to lowest, the priorities around um, the work for 2018. So Greg, do you want to now talk about the summits? Sure. So we had, uh, we had a big group join us in uh, Monterey, California. And we're not sure if it was the excellent agenda that we had or the fact that the meeting was in Monterey, California. <laughs> But it was one of the largest uh, attendee uh, groups for our member summit. So every year we do a member summit, and it's it's usually 60 to 90 people. This year we had about 90 people. And it's an opportunity for the members to share their experiences of the past year and talk about some of the things that are coming up. And we also uh, announced four new 
um, consortium innovators. So if you're not familiar with the innovator program, um, <clears throat> for people who have been with us a long time and made a significant contribution over that, that time, they earn a designation of consortium innovator. So um, Ron Plord from <clears throat> HP Enterprise, who's, uh, we were trying to remember how long Ron has been associated with the uh, consortium, but it's well over 20 years, I think. And he was with HP Enterprise and is now with Dell EMC. Oh, thank you. You're right. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how long he's been around. We can't even keep track. Yeah, we can't even remember who he works for anymore. That's right. <laughs> Um, and then um, Kristen from Sage, I believe she's still at Sage, who's done an awful lot of work on uh, the coach program and also talked at the summit about coaching managers and how important that is. Arndt van Asterfjord, who just barely fits in the picture there, um, also been with us many, many years and big contribution in terms of uh, uh, assessing customer success on the web and the measures and um, how you do that. And then Jacob Watts, who currently is with Red Hat, formerly with, uh, where was Jacob Let's before? Who is it? At WebEx. Let's go. Just go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Jacob had implemented KCS in a customer success uh, organization when he was at uh, WebEx slash Cisco, and now at Red Hat is helping them reinvigorate their KCS adoption. And he's done a lot of work with us on editing. Um, like the KCS V6 Practices Guide, helping get that out. Next slide. I think we have a list of, yeah, a list of the, so we covered a, a broad uh, collection of topics. We often, for the member summit, have um, a focus topic, just one of the initiatives or um, a theme. Um, this year has actually covered pretty much the whole landscape of the work we're doing. So these are some examples of the presentations and for members they're available on the wiki if you want to go check out any of these folks um, contribution to the member summit next slide so the other big event we run every year in addition to the member summit is the executive summit and we invite um, senior level executives from our member companies we try and manage the uh, attendance to be 25 to 30 um, executives in order to make it conversational. Uh, one of the rules that we follow that's worked pretty well is we try not to have any PowerPoint slides. So while we talk about all the initiatives or many of the initiatives, um, we, we try and make it conversational and really leverage the experience of the executives that are in the room. So this year we were in uh, Bluffton, South Carolina on a beautiful um, southern uh, plantation. That's what that is. That's a picture of the beautiful southern plantation. Too bad um, we don't have the, the picture of the chapel. Yeah. <laughs> some, yeah. Some of our meeting, some of the meeting was actually in a chapel that was <laughs> right adjacent to this. Which, which I think is appropriate because people accuse us of being a bit cultish or more like a religion than a than a business group, but that's a different story. Okay, next slide. Go. So go back to the, the topics we covered at the Executive Summit. Um, so we continue to work on, uh, the Executive Summit is a place where we're off, we work on the leadership framework for service excellence, which is really all about uh, the realization that you know, organizations are moving from, from silos and hierarchies um, to a matrix kind of a model. And we think the next step in that evolution is to move to a network. And you, when you think of the organization as a network, and we talk about it as a network of people and content, we want to connect people to content for known. We want to connect people to people for new. And that that network is unbounded, meaning the people and the content are not just within your company. They include your customers and consultants in your space and content from communities uh, as well as content from within your company. So when you think about this unbounded network of people and content, how you influence that is quite different. How you lead that is quite different than how you manage a hierarchy. And so the leadership framework for service excellence is really trying to 
articulate the principles of influence um, in leading a network and what's different about that versus you know, managing a hierarchy, which is very much a command and control model versus an influence model. Um, <clears throat> so we talk about things in that sort of in that context of the leadership framework and <clears throat> the customer engagement models, the value models, the value stack, those are very much a part of that kind of foundation for the conversation. <clears throat> and this time we had a couple of people visit, uh, join us, um, uh, Ryan and uh, Jerry, Jerry Mikulski, who's been with us many times over the years, um, is, is a great thinker in the space uh, at the intersection of uh, society and uh, technology. Um, and he talked about this concept of design from trust and our organizations going to stock or serve their customers. Um, so as we look at these emerging AI capabilities and things, you know, the, the capability to do uh, classification, programmatically classify things or, or recognize patterns to, to, to generate recommendations, to optimize things, um, are we going to use those tools to stalk or serve our customers? It was very, I think it was a pretty provocative conversation. And then Brad Smith um, also has been with us for many years on our, and he's on our board, um, is kind of the champion of the brand promise and the whole customer experience work that's gone on in the consortium. And we talked about how, how do you program these, these capabilities so that they reinforce your brand promise. And then how do you measure uh, whether or not you're actually you know, creating, creating an experience that reinforces your brand promise? I think in working with many of the members, the first question is, do you have a brand promise? So a brand promise is what you want your customers or the industry you serve to say about you when you're not in the room. So it's not actually limited to your customers. It could be potential customers. Um, so it's kind of a reputation for, for your organization. And if you don't have a brand promise that's explicit and known by everyone in the organization, the likelihood you're delivering a, an experience that reinforces a brand promise is pretty small. And so the first step, I think, is creating a brand promise. And then the second step is how do you really ensure that every interaction with the customer is reinforcing that brand promise. And as we move to automating some of those touch points, um, keeping in mind that we really want to reinforce a brand promise is an interesting challenge in terms of using bots and uh, machine learning and text analytics and all those things. We also had an interesting conversation about blockchain, which is a an emerging um, a kind of an architecture, te technology architecture, uh, that has some very interesting implications for support. Um, so that's that's the executive summit. Next slide. I'm going to talk a little bit now about the KCS Academy. So the KCS Academy, for those of you that are not familiar, is the um, for-profit, wholly owned subsidiary of the consortium and the um, the purpose of the KCS Academy is to create a network of um, certified practitioners, trainers, and verified and aligned vendors and bringing that network of people together to really um, take the um, whole KCS model out to the masses and continue to develop a network and community of people to interact around KCS. Um, what the, the, um, and one of the pieces of that is the, um, the workshops and the certification programs. So there's currently um, three different types, or three different types of workshops offered by the Academy, plus the workshops that are offered by the trainers. So there's the um, KCS Fundamentals online training, which is the um, basic for support agents um, just learning about KCS can go through an online training course that um, can take an hour to an hour and a half and then take um, the KCS V6 Fundamentals Certification Exam and re re receive credentials around that. 
And then the KCSV6 Practices Workshop is aimed towards more of the program manager level um, consultant, um, the coaches, your KDEs, um, people who need a real in-depth understanding of all of the eight practices of KCS. Um, that workshop would be the right workshop for them. And then the KCSV6 Practices Certification as well goes with that. And then um, we also are um, working on making a um, leadership workshop for V6. Um, it's out there right now, um, but we're in the process of updating it, but it's available. And then there's also, if you are looking at putting together an internal um, trainer program, or what we're calling a Center, KCS Center of Excellence. So if you have a large organization and it doesn't make sense to bring in outside trainers and it, you want to train your own um, trainers, there's a program for them to get certified as well as the COE program makes the materials um, available to those to you for you to use within your organization. So um, we also have the KCS Verified Online program, which is for the vendors. Um, these are our current um, verified and aligned vendors. So these are the vendors who have um, met the functionality to support KCS. These, the, we currently have um, 40 um, certified trainers, both internal and external in um, North America, Europe, and Asia. We have external trainers. So if you're looking to send people to a public workshop. There, all of those are listed and available on the KCS Academy website. There's links to um, the workshops that these external trainers offer. Um, many of the certification exams are done through our um, external trainers. We have eight new certified trainers in 2017, and we're looking to continue to grow um, to grow that. As far as um, the certification exams, we've seen a huge uptake on the popularity of KCS and people taking certification exams from last year. So, um, you know, we're up to over a thousand um, certification exams that were taken this year. So, just think, you know, we're kind of KCS is taking off um, in the industry, and um, we're seeing lots of activity around companies that aren't members, you know, places and people that we've never heard of before. So, it just shows that. Um, the, the strength of KCS and that it's really becoming a um, industry best practice. So activities for the Academy for 2018 is um, continuing to grow the network of trainers, practitioners, and vendors. Um, we're going to start a series of web sessions um, hosted by the KCS Academy that are focused more just on KCS where the consortium offers, we'll be offering still web sessions, but more focused on some of the newer initiatives, more innovative topics. And then we're doing the very first KCS Academy World Tour. tour. Um, our first stop will be in Boston on March 1st. These will be one day um, sessions that will focus on um, some best practices, and also introduction for um, new companies that are new to KCS to come and have an um, opportunity to see, um, to hear about what KCS is, and also an opportunity for the verified aligned vendors and the certified trainers um, to get some recognition. The second one will be on March 11th in Munich. And then um, we're also gonna work on some continuing some online um, workshop modules continue building them. Greg, do you want to talk about the Australia event? Yeah. New Zealand yeah. event? So there's been a, um, actually the, there's been interest in KCS in, in this part of the world for some time, but I think the uh, economy there has been pretty weak uh, for the past five or six years. It is slowly coming back, and as the economy strengthens, we're finding there's a growing interest in uh, and KCS. So we've had a couple of people express interest in getting certified as trainers in that region. So we're hosting a V6 practices workshop in Sydney. I think it's almost full. <laughs> uh, but if you have, if some of you have uh, people in that neighborhood who 
would benefit from the training and or the certification. We're going to offer the KCS Practices Certification Exam as part of these uh, events. It's in February. And then there's uh, a, a little pocket of interest in, in New Zealand. Um, so we're doing a, a session in uh, Wellington, New Zealand. Next slide. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. Hey, it's Laurel. So if we have someone that we want to promote one of those classes to that are in New Zealand or Australia, how would we, how should we do that? Is it out on the website somewhere? It is. It is. The registration's okay. on, the, on the consortium, I think, isn't it, Kelly, on the consortium site? So the register, so there's two practices workshops and those are on the academy site and then there's the executive briefing which is on the consortium site. I'll put the links okay. in the chat. Okay, thank you. And we are in the midst of um, planning the 2018 member summit which will be in Napa, California. Uh, Jill and I were just up there um, kind of checking things out after the pretty serious fires they had in that area. But things actually looked pretty good. There wasn't a whole lot of evidence, at least in the areas that we went, of, uh, of damage. Um, so we, we are moving forward with the plan to host the meeting in Napa. And uh, <laughs> the theme is distinguishing the fertilizer from the fruit. Uh, and we're going to we're going to have two tracks for the in this uh, member summit. We've kind of got uh, a group of members who are very interested in uh, continuing to talk about KCS and KCS across the organization, and and we're finding that actually the KCS principles, um, especially when combined with intelligence forming, really uh, reflect an agile kind of model for knowledge management. And um, so that's a, you know, the, the KCS interest uh, continues to grow, as Melissa said. And so we'll have a track that's focused on that. And then a second track that uh, for people who want to participate in some of the more emerging topics, some of the newer sort of innovative topics in terms of predictive customer engagement and AI as an enabler. AI actually probably part of both tracks, but. These are the topics we're looking at covering in the 2018 Member Summit. And uh, I believe the registration is up on the consortium site if you want to register and all the logistics in terms of the hotel information and things like that. That is correct and it is in the chat. Uh, so membership benefits. Uh, uh, there are just so many, it's hard to put them on a single slide. I just want, I threw this slide in here as part of PowerPoint karaoke um, because I just wanted to quickly reiterate all of the things that are available to you as a member, um, including the, the resources on the website, the library, um, which is where all the KCS uh, resources are, um, and then the wiki as well, which is the KCS resources on the website have public information available and the wiki is members only. Um, you can send all, any and all of your people to monthly web sessions, um, and that includes online attendance at the program team meetings. Um, seats at the program team meetings are uh, allocated by membership level, and that, is, that goes for the member summit and executive summit uh, as well in terms of um, there are complimentary seats in, involved in some of those membership levels. So if you have any questions about that, um, or if I can help point you to resources, please let me know. Whoa. Uh -oh. and, then, and then PowerPoint crashed, which is okay because I know what these, crashed. what these last couple <laughs> of slides are. <laughs> that. Um, so that slide that was about to come up was the KCS uh, new page in the consortium library called Ask an Expert. And we are still working out the kinks. I've put the link um, into the chat. Um, 
we're still working out the kinks in terms of how that is going to work um, or in terms of organizing the content, but there have some great conversations have been started. Um, it's a place where you can go and ask your burning questions about KCS and um, the certified trainers and the consortium staff are in there um, answering, answering those questions. And then the other thing, oh, look, you're back up already. That was very fast. Um, the other it happens a lot. I know how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that that we thought would be interesting um, as part of the leadership committee meeting that we just had last week was we went ahead and opened a uh, consortium store. So there aren't too too many um, items in here yet. There is a this mug is my favorite. You can carry it around with you um, as a reminder that context is as important as content. Um, there are a couple other things in there. You can get your logo to T-shirts for both the consortium and the academy, um, and then there's some some stickers um, for your you know for dem uh, uh, displaying uh, your your commitment to the KCS double loop. But if you have um, requests for merchandise, uh, please let me know. And uh, the link to that is also in the chat. Kelly, what's the other mug we have? Is it search early, search often? No, but that would be a good one. It, the other mug is actually do not put goals on activities. Oh yeah, that's more important. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> in terms of, you know, backup, I thought that would be a nice thing to be able to carry around with you. Look, my mug says it, I, we do not put goals on activities. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Great. Yeah, this is exciting. I'm excited about that. I'm going to shop right now. <laughs> if you have last minute holiday gifts that you need to need to take care of, then yeah, be an excellent exactly. place to do that. But uh, also, wait, it's not last minute yet, is it? Uh, uh, kind of. <laughs> so. Uh, we have t now look at that. We did that so quickly. We have time for questions. Um, I, the, I think we all, the staff wants to say thank you so much. Um, it's truly a pleasure and an honor to be able to facil facilitate this work and, and draw together this, um, fabulous group of people. So thank you. Um, and upcoming events, I will put links, uh, in the chat, but both sort of serviceinnovation.org and the kcsacademy.net slash events. Um, and, um, and what questions can we answer for you or what suggestions do you have for topics in the new year? No, well, I don't think we're taking any more topics. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. We kind of have a big long list, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> don't open that door. How about you can plus one, uh, topics that have already been yeah. suggested. No new topics, but you can tell us what you want to hear. I have a question. Excellent. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, on the Ask an Expert page, um, could you demo that quickly <laughs> or just talk a little or just kind of talk through? So um, how, do we, how do we use it? So um, registration is required. Um, you got to log in. You yeah. got to okay. you got to log into the library. Which, um, if you want to leave a comment on any of the on any of the pages, or if you want to um, get updates on any of the pages, mm -hmm. um, you have to log in. Uh, and so, um, Melissa's getting there so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so this page, the landing page, organizes vaguely the questions that have been asked. And here's my goal for this week, which is um, we have now a long thread of questions in this comment box. So essentially what we're trying to do is build a kind of a community or a Q&A page with technology that we already have on hand without requiring people to build more logins. And so right. it's a little bit clunky, but um, these pages um, that have links at the top all link to separate question and answers, right? And now mm -hmm. there's quite a thread of comments, which is where you can add your question underneath, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which I need to go back and grab 
conversations and turn them into their own separate pages so that they appear as their own topics on that list. Okay, so um, so we can't create a new topic. We, we only can comment on the existing ones. Because you, Laurel, are a KCS yes. certified trainer, you do have mm -hmm. um, edit rights on this page to create a new topic. And we would love it if you are getting the same question over and over or you know, if you, mm -hmm. if there's a hot topic, um, mm -hmm. we can, um, sidebar on that, but we'd, I'd love, you okay. are set up yeah. to, to do that already. And I'd love to okay. have you do that. Awesome. If you look right well, here at the top where it says edit page and because yep. I have rights, that's where you would mm -hmm. click. I see it. Yep. And actually you'd click new page and that will, that will, um, show you a template. See the ask an expert template. Mm -hmm. Right. And that adds it to that particular page. That's right. Um, and there's some yeah. instructions here about. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe a little, um, just a little context around this. The the intent here is to have um, sort of an authorized source of truth uh, from the consortium point of view for questions about KCS. So there's a LinkedIn group for KCS, which is moderated by Rick Joslin, who has a an agenda and a criteria that are his own. Um, and there's a variety of things in that LinkedIn group, um, some that we would agree with and some that we would not. And so we were having a debate, do we set up our own LinkedIn group? Um, but there is already a LinkedIn group, so why have two? So the decision was to create a space for our certified trainers and our uh, consortium innovators to offer opinions from an expert point of view that would be a source of truth from at least from the consortium's perspective and then if somebody asks a question in that linkedin group you can just if and there's an answer in the ask an expert page on the uh in the library you just link from you know you say there's an answer to this question from the consortium and here's a link to the uh, page in the Ask an Expert. So it's complementing, um, complementing the LinkedIn group, uh, but it is from a perspective of sort of an official answer from uh, the consortium staff, a consortium innovator, or a certified trainer. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. So it really is just getting started. I, I have 15 questions I should write responses to here and put them in the in this ask an expert space <laughs> but we're hoping people will link to these answers from other places including the existing kcs linkedin group nice so we're, we're not competing with them we're complementing what they're doing but with from a perspective of uh, uh confidence and a source of truth The also nice thing about this is that it's searchable and um, findable, as opposed to LinkedIn is kind of hard to find old threads and search and and this is also indexed by Google. And so there are two ways to put something in here. If you if you have something you want to put in, you can you can get. Um, you know, sign in with Edit Rights or just email it to Kelly. Or we email your question and answer to Kelly. And if this gets really busy and active, then we, we might have to look at a different platform to host the content. But we think this is good enough for now, good enough to get started. Other questions or thoughts? I put my email address in the in the chat. Excellent. Well, look at that. 10 minutes early even. If you think of other things, if you have questions, if you have thoughts, let us know. Um, and otherwise, Greg or Melissa, do you have any closing thoughts?
No, just thank you again, everyone, for your participation. We couldn't be what we are without you. You are the consortium, and we appreciate um, your transparency and your trust and openness and working with us. Here, here. Likewise. <laughs> Have an excellent holiday season, and uh, we'll hope to see you in the new year. Th thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Great stuff. Thanks. Great stuff. Thanks, guys.